Hello everyone, welcome back. We have a life-size mountain goat to work on today. I like to use my spike stand so I can keep my mannequins upside down so I can easily work on it. I mean these spike stands are quite useful if you have the opportunity to make yourself one or two of them it would uh, it would really come in handy in, uh, in occasions like this that you want to hold up the form in a shape that uh, you cannot use its own feet to attach it to any kind of board then you want it uh, to be held on sideways or upside down so this is the way to go anyway as you can see I did mark down the relief cut areas these are the pits areas if you want to name it but that's where you need to have them cleared out about one inch uh, on an animal like this size you need to create that gap so the skin can pull through for the top of the animal's skin so it can reach and you can uh, sew it back together otherwise uh, they're gonna get bunched underneath the uh, belly and then you cannot have enough skin to finish the mount so it's a necessary thing especially on the back legs and uh, it is important to make it um, basically deep enough not too deep and not too not not deep enough basically it has to be in the right size if you cut a little bit more it would be okay but if you cut too short or not enough then you can run into problem if the skin is getting bunched up and is not reaching on the top so um, it's important to have the right amount and uh, I like to based on experience I like to give it a shot the way I think it's the right amount and then um, basically go with uh, with the skin and give it a give it a test fit so I usually create a big gap with my reciprocating saw make a, a big start and then with my hand saw as you can see I can uh, make it a little bit uh, deeper or smoother I mean uh, there's gonna be some edges when you cut and then you need to sand them off make them smooth um, so now we're gonna test it test fit the skin so that's why I have the dorsal uh, cut on the on the skin so basically I can just uh, pull the skin over the legs just like the way we put our pants on and uh, that's uh, that's the best way especially if the animal has long hair allows you to hide the seam when you sew it back together this is uh, this is a very good way of, uh, of cutting and mounting them um, sometimes the pose of the animal doesn't allow it if the animal is in a dramatic pose let's say if it's a, a running goat or uh, like any kind of form and shape that has the legs too far apart from from one another this uh, incision might not work it, it can work but you need to cut the body in half and has its own uh, different methods so this way the, the way uh, the owner of this goat had decided to have it was kind of like um, a good opportunity for us to to cut it uh, the way it is and uh, like a, a dorsal incision and you can see that it will work quite fine so now I'm going to test fit every area if the skin comes close um, like about half inch to an inch in some uh, wider areas like around the belly if you can reach the skin to about an inch and it doesn't it doesn't meet it's okay because it's uh, because of the traction between the form and the skin uh, can be removed later or it can be smoothed out when you apply the height paste uh, height paste allows it to get quite a bit slippery and the skin can move freely so you can easily bring it back you just got to make sure that the skin is not too tight uh, you want it I sometimes don't even want it snug I want it relaxed because the, the more pressure you put on the skin when you're mounting it, let's say if you're pulling it too hard to make the ends meet so you can sew, always keep in mind that when the skin is drying, it's going to shrink. No matter what you do, they're going to shrink. There is moisture in it, and when the moisture goes and dries, any kind of skin will shrink. 
up to different degrees but they all shrink and that shrinkage is what is going to cause some drumming in some of the areas that the skin is not relaxed and is not glued down in, uh, in a relaxed position so anyway as you can see I have pushed all the legs down through the incision of the legs I'm trying to see if my relief cuts around the pits are sufficient or not they seem to be sufficient and I'm test fitting the thickness of the legs sometimes uh, these forms come from the manufacturer a little bit too thick or a little bit too thin we just have to adjust the uh, size but um, luckily uh, this was this was a very snug fit form for me I mean it uh, I didn't really need to do much to it so I think I'm quite satisfied right now uh, with the fitness of the skin around the mannequin so I'm gonna pull it off and uh, continue with the rest of the preparation of the form I take the skin off it's wet tan and uh, I put it in a bag close the bag and put it in the fridge so it stays moist and pliable till I want to work I mean you can keep it for days in the fridge just like that without having any problem problem for it so I had uh, designed what kind of a like in my mind I have designed uh, what kind of a rock scenery this gold is going to go on and based on that we have um, basically a very small uh, two by four frames made just like what you see right now and this is going to be all holding up the goat and eventually it'll be hidden underneath the uh, artificial rock scenery so what we need right now is um, a, 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 basically a frame that the goat is being held up while we're working on it so also you make sure that it's 100 percent level from look at it from behind look at it from the front and those use those nut and bolts that are uh, on each leg rod use those to have it quite level and straight once you're satisfied you can continue with roughing up the surface of the form with any kind of tool that makes it easier for you because that is also very necessary it it creates a rough uh, surface for for the glue to adhere to and um, that's just great because these these mannequins are coming from the company quite slippery with a quite, uh, slippery surface on them yeah you can see the face that I have drawn on the end part of the goat looks like a little sad person anyway um, anyway uh, you can you can rewind the video and uh, and see what I'm talking about uh, the end of the goat looks like a uh, looks like a face of a person anyway so I'm um, drilling out the nostrils and creating the uh, the mouth gap or the slot that uh, we're supposed to tuck the lip skin into basically doing all the preparation of the form so we can proceed with the mount and the next thing because we have our dorsal incision from head all the way to the tail is just uh, putting the skull plate back on as you can see it's been cut a little bit too short and always my guide is the eye socket because these forms have been professionally made with that in mind and uh, they leave that space for us so basically if I can hold that skull plate to a point that my socket eye socket looks normal and round that's the right place for it so as you can see if I put a little bit of a piece of plywood in two different spot my eye socket is going to turn into uh, a fairly round position and that gives me the idea that okay that's exactly where I need to put it and I like to hold down my blocks of plywood with a couple of brad nails or nails so when I want to um, screw down my skull plate I don't have to hold them up with my hands so right now I have made some pre-drilled hole before skull plate on a goat is quite thin so you got to be very careful not to break it 
they don't have a very uh, heavy or thick skull play, uh, skull walls on on their on their head. So I do not necessarily countersink them because the skull doesn't have the thickness that uh, allows me to do that. But again, you know, there's going to be enough material covering the screw head, so I'm not too worried about it. As you can see, one one of the holes in front. Uh, of the forehead is just gone too wide you can see that my screw is gonna go right through but what I do I don't push it all the way in as as, as long as it's uh, grabbing and cinching tight the skull back into the mannequin I'll just leave it like that and I cover up the, the rest of it with uh, paper mache Yeah, once I feel that the skull plate is uh, placed exactly where I want it to, then I'll let the uh, mache work start. So anyway, there's not much to talk about. Turn up the volume, enjoy the music while I'm doing this part. Actually, uh, we are coming to an end for this uh, segment of the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll uh, see you on the second part and it's going to be uploaded fairly soon